It's time for the Mike Norvell Show, presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. The show is supported by the Tennessee Lottery, Jack Pirtle's Chicken, and by Mid-South Chevy Dealers. Welcome in, everyone. The Tigers made their very first trip to historic Annapolis yesterday. And when you walk in that stadium, and instead of seeing players' names, you see all the battlefields and the important thing. Oh, uh, can you yeah, hook me in? I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's all right. It's time for the Mike Norvell Show, presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. The show is supported by the Tennessee Lottery, Jack Pirtle's Chicken, and by Mid-South Chevy Dealers. Welcome in, everybody. The Tigers made their very first visit to historic Annapolis yesterday. When you walk in that stadium and then you see all the battlefields that are on the facades instead of players names you realize how important this institution is and then when you start playing football you realize how good they are at that too and coach your team hung in had a chance to tie the end at the uh, at the end of the game it just did not work but the battle was really there yeah you know i thought our guys they, they fought hard for for 60 minutes you know uh, we knew that we were playing a, a team that presented a lot of challenges in every area and uh, you know our guys they, they you know we made some plays but uh, obviously we didn't we didn't capitalize on some opportunities and uh, you know they you know you got to give credit to them they did a, did a nice job especially offensively executing their game plan and uh, you know we didn't make enough plays to win the game you came out offensively very nicely very first uh, drive you score they answer you score again and that's sort of the way it was and you thought special teams might play a role it sort of did in this football game it did and uh, we know we know anytime you're playing a big a big game that you're gonna see uh, those those momentum swings and uh, you know, like I said they did they did a nice job our guys, I did like. I liked the way that our guys uh, came out and competed, and they competed all, you know, from from start to finish. And I, we we started fast. It's something we've been challenging the offense with, and it was kind of just such a unique dynamic. We had, I think, in the first and the third quarter, we only had one offensive possession in each of those each yeah. of those frames because of the kickoff return for a touchdown, and so that forced our defense on the field uh, uh, for uh, a little bit longer than what we'd we'd want them to. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to making those plays when you get the opportunity, and uh, we didn't get it done as a football team. You, you look and there's just no way around this. They rushed for 447 yards. They rushed for 370 last time. This is a great triple option offense. Why is it so hard to stop? Well, you know, you as, as a coach, you try to be multiple in, in what you show them and what you present. And um, you know, when you're when you're facing that type of, of, of offense, I mean, the techniques, the fundamentals. Um, yes, it comes down to, to to pad level. But when you're playing an offensive lineman, that's you know, really sitting there, maybe uh, maybe just a couple feet off the yeah. ground. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a different technique that you have to use. And so, um, you know, I thought I, I, I thought they did a nice job in their execution. They had a, the bye week leading up to our game, and they were able to present a couple other challenges but uh, um, you know at the end of the day you know we've got to do a better job of, of you know, getting off blocks we got to do a better job of uh, of containing the quarterback and then you know I mean obviously you know with the triple option you got all three facets there with the pitch and uh, you know we just uh, they did a nice job you know we've got to learn from this we got to get better um, but it was a it was definitely a, a little a rough day for us in, in that regards a uh, rough day for a lot of folks that take on Navy that's for sure here's what's coming up all the game highlights and it was again a game of many Many, many big plays. The Mid-South Chevy Dealers Inside Access is all about the walk-on program, and the scholarship players are talking about it. And then the AutoZone Road Ahead. Thank goodness we're back home at the Liberty Bowl. That'll be Tulsa on Saturday night. But first, the first half comes your way in a minute on the Mike Norvell Show. You're watching the Mike Norvell Show. 
was my first visit to the Naval Academy. You walk in, you feel the history, yours too. What was your impression? Uh, you know, we knew, we knew going to this game there was going to be a, an unbelievable atmosphere. I mean, the, you know, I think Navy has the second longest winning streak at home. And when you walk in, you see the tradition, you see the, uh, uh, you know, like you said, the, the, just the historic feel there. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a, a great place to play a college football game. Uh, you know, uh, for us, you know, we knew we had to come in and get off to a fast start. Uh, we wanted to be able to try to take some of that momentum to try to keep the crowd out of it. Um, you know, I was really pleased with the offense. You know, we were going into a, the conditions yesterday were, um, you know, a sunny day and fe you know, felt good, but uh, you know, the Windy. winds, w winds were swirling. But uh, really pleased going into the wind. You know, our offense came out, executed uh, you know, pretty flawlessly down the field, and then finishing up with the, the big touchdown catch to Anthony Miller was was a great start and basically how we would want to script uh, uh, the beginning of this game. This was a beautiful drive. The Mid South Chevy players' drive of the game, and, uh, and honestly into the win that ball was on the money Anthony Miller so first uh, pomp and circumstance and then you are able to really put a drive together and here comes Navy with this run and watch the fakes and watch the downfield blocking folks because it's the thing of beauty now there's Nard Avery and a bunch of folks equal to the task early on yeah you know we, we got there and got them into a fourth and two situation and uh, boy you talk about a bang bang play right there at the at the uh, first down marker you know thought about a possible challenge there I uh, just didn't have a great angle on it, but uh, um, you know we just got to capitalize on opportunities there you see the ball come out inside the five yard line we knew that would happen at some point within the game and we had to be there to capitalize on it when you can, can uh, steal a possession and you didn't didn't uh, didn't get on the ball there but uh, um, you know big big answer and uh, you know we talked a lot about the importance of special teams and I think you see the confidence our guys are starting to build you know it had been 20 years before our last kickoff return now we just waited a couple of weeks and Tony yeah. Pollard uh, you know Tony Pollard with a huge return um, you know, really got the momentum back on our side and uh, was pleased to see that unit uh, against a very, very good uh, Navy coverage team. You know, it's interesting how games turn on, on big plays, and, and here's one that uh, is, is amazing. This is a pass interference call on Chris Morley that seemed like it was way over the receiver's head. So you got these kinds of calls. You had three fumbles that just bounced right back to them and then they hit a big play. That's really a, a darn well thrown ball by Will Worth, their quarterback. And they answer 14 all and back you come. Yeah, you know, they did a nice job of executing. You know, we had the third down, the third down interference call was, um, you know, was one that, uh, you know, we've, We've got to do a better, a little bit better job with our technique and what we're doing. But uh, um, you know, that extended their drive. They were able to go down and, and score. And, um, you know, we get the ball back, and you we're, we're, had a quick three and out. And this is where the time of possession really started hurting. Um, you know, because we had the kickoff return for a touchdown, so we only had the one offensive possession. And then, then well, when we were not able to sustain that next drive, you know, it put us in a in a tougher situation. But uh, you know, their great effort from Chauncey and Lanier to contest the touchdown. The guy fumbles it uh, out of the back of the end zone. And so we got the ball back with, with no harm really done. And that was an amazing turnaround. The play by Lanier stripped the ball, fumbling it as it hit the pile on a touchback. And you are going to march down. And I mean, Ferguson is just dissecting this team here. Yeah, I thought, Riley, this was a really nice drive. You know, good good mix and balance of run and pass. Uh, this is what we want our offense to look like. I thought we were, we were really clicking all the way down the field. Uh, we get down here, uh, first and goal at the three. Um, and then, you know, we were not able to capitalize and you know, this is something that we have to be able to get the ball in the end zone you know we get right there on the edge of it but uh, we just weren't able to uh, to finish the ball there in, in the end zone you know four tries against a good team you know we, we've got to be able to get that done and you go for it here and that's a play that's worked a bunch that the dive play fake and the quarterback going in didn't happen and here comes Navy and there is excellent defense and this I thought might have been the best defensive stand of the game. It, it was and we, we were able to get a stop that's why we went for it on fourth down you're thinking hey we'd have a great opportunity for the field position battle uh, we came at, back and you know we got the ball there at the 30 uh, we had a, an opportunity to have a touchdown pass in the first down uh, you didn't didn't finish the play and then uh, um, you know kind of uncharacteristically uh, you know we, we're not able to capitalize with three points there I thought that was one of the major keys of the game yep. that 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 sequence there um, you know what we left anywhere from six to ten points uh, out on the field and you know we can't we can't do that especially against a team that's going to control the ball control the clock and uh, you know uh, you know the, the good football team they are uh, absolutely look they they knocked off a top 10 team in Houston 
uh, and they've won 14 in a row at home now. And by the way, they're 11 and one in the AAC, and they've won 22 of their last 26 games, and they've got the lead uh, at the half, and and it, it's just tough going. I thought you tried balance and you were successful offensively, but those 243 rush yards, wow, that is a testament to Navy's grit. There's no question about that. Yeah, you know, we talked to our guys and right there calling them up going into the, into the into halftime. Um, you know, we knew we were going to need some stops and we had to play better there in the, in, in the second half, but it was a seven point game. And so we knew Navy was getting the ball to get, come out. We need to go in, make some adjustments. But, uh, you know, I just challenged our guys. We have to have the full 60 minutes and, uh, um, you know, put ourselves in position to, to, to see, see the victory. Second half highlights come your way in just one minute. It will go down to the wire. You're watching The Mike Norvell Show. At the break, it's a one-score game. I think you're pretty pleased with your offense, but you're trying to figure out how to stop this Navy running attack. Yeah, we knew we knew that uh, you know we had to make some adjustments, and it was going to be a challenge. Uh, you know, our guys, you know, they were they were battling, but we we need we needed a, a couple sparks. We needed to play. Um, you know, they got the ball. You know, they they moved the ball down the field. Um, you know, our guys are playing hard. Just you know, we're working to get in a position, but you got to give credit to uh, to them where it's due. I mean, they did it. They had they had a nice plan. They were attack. They were able to attack us in a couple of uh, different areas that we hadn't uh, you know quite seen up to this point in, in ways they were presenting their offense. And um, you know, they moved the ball down effectively down the field. And uh, um, you know. We just got to continue to, 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 to build off of, off, off of the success we've had. And, you know, we got to find a way to get a stop here in, in this situation coming out of the uh, coming out of the half. But you know, our guys they never they never questioned, they never uh, uh, you know hesitated. They were just continuing playing. You know, offense, defense, everybody's there trying to support each other. Uh, but we knew this game was going to come down to to a couple of big plays, and uh, you know, offense came back out. You know, I really thought uh, that the offensive line did a much better job in this game. They, you know, the, the pad level, um, you know, being able to get some movement up front, you know, is, you know, we're, because we're about to establish, because we're able to establish the run game, uh, you know, open up some things in the in the quick passing game like you're seeing here. Um, you know, a couple couple plays you see there. catch by Joey Magnifico. Yeah, Joey did a very nice job coming in and, uh, you know, Daniel Hurd here on a third down conversion. I thought Daniel did some really nice things. Uh, throughout the game yesterday. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can see Riley and the confidence that the guys that we're playing with, um, you know, being able to get the ball out. And, uh, you know, I thought he did some, some really, you know, really nice things and then capitalizing it here. Great response by our offense, 28-21. Uh, um, we felt like we were right there in position to, to go get this game going in the fourth quarter. And that is Daniel Hurd's first touchdown this year. But back comes this Navy attack, and it, it is it's really an interesting thing to watch because they'll hit you with a dive and then they'll go outside like this and then they set up a pass with all of it and this kid Will Worth, he really engineers it absolutely beautifully. You know, he had over 200 yards rushing the ball and uh, makes all the decisions the correct way. Yeah, you know, he, uh, he played a, a really good game. You know, they, uh, as an offense, uh, you know, I thought they executed well. Big stop there by Jonathan Cook, you know, got us into a, uh, you know, third down, you know, a good third down situation is right before the, the end of the third quarter. Uh, we get a stop, it's uh, fourth and four, fourth and five. We end up taking a timeout to force them to, have to either kick against the wind or to give us an opportunity with the fourth yeah. and four, fourth and five opportunity. Uh, but they, uh, you know, they were able to capitalize. We had a, a little uh, a bust in coverage and uh, uh, they, they scored the touchdown. I thought that strategy was beautiful. Make them kick into the wind. And then they ended up with that fake and the touchdown pass, but right back to work is Riley Ferguson. Yeah, you know we got we got the ball back. We needed a drive here. Uh, you know uh, you know, we talked about those missed opportunities. We you know we needed we needed that spark. We needed to be able to get to get the ball down. They, we just went down two scores. Um, you know, we weren't able to capitalize on the third down, but man, really pleased with our defense on this next drive. Um, it was a critical critical drive. We had to get a stop. They got the stop. Offense comes yep. back out on the field, and then we we, we started moving the ball back. Down down the field, um, you know, with with the you know big uh, big pass play there to Sean Dykes, the, the true freshman. You know, Sean's a guy that's continuing to come on for us. Uh, you know, doing some really nice things. Uh, there, there, Riley stands in while getting you know you know took a took a shot of uh, pressure coming off the edge, but stepped into it. Was able to put the ball right on the money to uh, uh, to Daniel Hurd, and then the the true freshman. Uh, Patrick Taylor coming in, you know, with a little wildcat package and got the ball there into the end zone, one score game. And we got a game again, and then the, your defense 
has to do the job. And uh, you know this 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 team continues to amaze. They do it through the air. You're not really expecting that surprise uh, is a big thing. But your defense does hold. They go to kick this field goal. Look at that. The wind swirling. It hits that left upright. You've got a chance to march down and tie the game. Yeah, a lot of confidence right here. Uh, you know, I was, I was I was sure we were going to move the ball down, go get the ball in the end zone. Uh, you know, third down conversion here by Anthony Miller. Uh, you know, I thought I thought our guys, you know, had a, had, a, had a ton of confidence coming into it, and then. You know, just one of the things that we talked about all year long. You know, you, we, you, we talked about you know, ball security, having to own the ball. Um, and, you know, we, we had done that up until this point. But uh, you're here at the end when we're on the game tie and drive. Yep. Uh, you know, we put the ball on the ground and, uh, you know, gave the ball back to them. Uh, they, they were able to capitalize and, uh, you know, they, they marched down and uh, got the ball in the end zone. That would have been a first down at the 45. Who knows what would have happened. I just love the. the the true grit, they do score there, and there's your final 42-28. And as I said, they're invincible these days. At home, you have balance. You almost have 100 yards rushing. Look at Riley, 333 passing yards again. I thought he played terrific in this football game. Uh, and there you see the 333 yards. Anthony Miller was sensational. Philip Mayhew, again, was very, very good for you. And then you found yourself a new linebacker. This kid was terrific. 16 tackles for Curtis Davis. Yeah, you know, Curtis did a nice job. He you know, came in. Uh, Sharif, you know, kind of re-injured, uh, you know, his, his, his leg. And so... So, uh, Curtis had to come in and play more snaps than what he has uh, in the past, and uh, you know, I thought I thought his effort to the ball was was impressive. Jannard Avery, those guys, they battled. I mean, we just you know we got to continue to work, um, you know, fundamentals, technique, you know, and we do that. Uh, I know our guys are going to respond the right way. That's one thing I've been really pl proud of with this team in every area. They they will respond, and uh, you know we got a big game coming up this week. No and, question and in my and mind so, about that. And so we just got to go back to work and put ourselves in position to go just. Focus on this one step, this one opportunity, and uh, I'm confident the rest will take care of itself. Inside Access, that's coming your way next on The Mike Norvell Show. The Mike Norvell Show. A couple of years ago, a walk-on program was established that has been very productive. In fact, so productive, even the scholarship players appreciate it. Walk on, they show up because they work harder than we do. They work three times harder. And uh, once they finally get their chance, they want to show the world what they can do. They're huge, you know, because they, they understand how hard they have to work because they want a scholarship. So they almost work harder than some people that have scholarships. So they just grind and they, they continue to get better and better every day. And when, once they get that scholarship, they just continue to work because they know that they can lose it just as fast as they got it. So it's exciting to see more and more people just continue to step up. They are important because though this program means more to them than scholarship players, you can say, for the simple fact that they came here with money out their own pocket to come here and to, to have the experience, you know. And a lot of people don't know that walk-ons can actually be key players to a team because it honestly saves a, a college team in a sense because you have to think about it. I mean, in, a recruit, in, in recruiting, you know there's going to be some busts in recruiting. And uh, a walk-on that is strong and actually should have gotten a scholarship from the beginning is, is actually good for coaches because they have a guy who's not even on scholarship, so that's one scholarship they don't, that they don't have um, who's actually producing for that team. But if they're producing, most likely they'll end up getting a scholarship in which Anthony actually did. So, I mean, it's unbelievable, you know, the road that he's, he's came, came on, so it's just unbelievable. Some people don't know I walked on to my JUCO. At my junior college, I walked on. So, I mean, I know, I mean, walk-ons are very important because they work hard, you know what I'm saying? Some, they don't take things for granted like a, maybe a Division I person that has a scholarship, so, yeah. I know guys like uh, Anthony Miller have helped you coach. Oh, no question. And that's one of the, that's one of the ma major heartbeats of our program is seeing guys that come in, pay their own way, and then get on the field, have success. You know, Austin Hall this year, Anthony Miller, Phil Mayhew, you can, the list goes on and on. It's a pretty, pretty impressive group. Yeah, the AutoZone road ahead means Tulsa's in town.
The AutoZone Road Ahead, it's homecoming. Tulsa's in town. That's Saturday night, 5 o'clock Friday, a parade down Central. Yeah, we're excited about getting back at the home at the Liberty Bowl and being in front of Tiger Nation, uh, the Tiger Walk, all those things, the homecoming uh, festivities. It's going to be a great week. we got to get back on track. I know our guys are going to respond. Big, big game coming up on Saturday night. You like offense, you're going to love this. So we will see you Friday at the parade. We'll see you Saturday at the Liberty Bowl. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you for watching the Mike Norvell Show, presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. The show is supported by the Tennessee Lottery, Jack Pirtle's Chicken, and by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers.